Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday edition here of Bible Tract Echoes. If you have been listening very long to the program, you know that I have a very unique title that I give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast. The title is this. We call them our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Well, it's obvious why I use the word Tuesday in the title, but those two other words, Tract and Truth. We call them the Tract and Truth Tuesday because we talk about gospel tracts and using tracts to share the gospel. Do you know what a gospel tract is? That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's an evangelism tool. It's a way to give the gospel to somebody, not only when we're talking to them about Jesus Christ as Savior. But when we can't talk to them about Christ as Savior, we can give them a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation that they can take with them and read sometime later on. I want you to get from us a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. I'm going to highlight one of them here in just a moment. Well, that's why we use the word tract. But the other word is truth. And when we talk about tract and truth here on our Tuesday broadcast, it's the gospel truth and the truth surrounding the gospel. And to that end, I have a question for you. My focus today is simply one question and one illustration. The question involves this. Here's the question. Why can it seem so hard to get people to receive Christ? Why can it seem so hard to get people to receive Christ? You and I understand the benefits. Why can it be so hard? That's my question. The illustration I have for you is not an illustration that you and I can use in telling somebody the gospel. It's an illustration that I hope will urge you and I to see lost people and be moved to tell them the gospel. That's my focus today. My Bible is sitting open to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. In a moment, I'll be reading the opening three verses there, verses that for many of you will be quite familiar. And by the way, if you've never memorized Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, I would really strongly encourage you to do that. First, though, let me highlight this gospel tract in my hand. This gospel tract is the, well, it's the hallmark track of the ministry. This track got this ministry started. Our ministry was founded by an evangelist named Dr. Paul Levine, greatly and powerfully used of God, and he was asked to write some articles for a Christian magazine many, many decades ago, and this was his first article entitled, The New Birth the new birth. And so many people began to ask for reprints that the magazine said, you just make it into a tract and give it away. And that's how things got started. Well, this tract, again, called the new birth is designed to really lay out with clarity what it means to be born again, what the new birth is all about. It begins by saying, well, this is what the new birth is not because so many people are confused about what the new birth is. Is. They think it's religion. They think it's turning over a new leaf. They think it's just reforming their life, becoming a moral person, trying to obey the golden rule, and the, and the list can go on there. But that's not the new birth at all. Then this track quickly moves into what the new birth really is. And I'm going to read in part what the track says. It says this, 
a birth is the coming into being of a new life which has the nature of its parents. When you were born the first time, you were made a partaker of the old nature, the sinful nature that we all receive from Adam. When you are born again, you become the partaker of a divine nature, according to 2 Peter 1.4, and that is the true you. Do you have this divine nature? Dear friend, to be born again, to have the new birth means that you have a new nature nature, God's nature in you. Would you please let me send you this track, The New Birth? It's part of that sample packet. As a matter of fact, when you open the sample packet, this will be the first track you will see. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to make known to you three ways by which you can contact us. Do that today. Give us your name, your mailing address, and we will send that sample packet free of charge. Now, we have been sending gospel tracts all over the world free of charge for 80 plus years. I'm going to send it to you free. Let you and I become a partner. If you can't wait to the end, you can go to our website. Our web address is Bible, you know how to spell that, Bible Tracks, plural, Bible Tracks, Inc. Dot O-R-G, and you can order the sample packet, the free sample packet there all by yourself. If your Bible is open to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3 says this, And you hath he, that is God, you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, and among whom also we all had our conversation, our life pattern in time past, in the love of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. There's the problem. When we ask the question, why does it seem so hard to get people to receive Christ? The answer really begins with the question itself. How do we get people saved? All of us have tried to get people saved at one time or another. But it's easy to forget that getting them saved is not our assignment. Telling them their need for salvation is what we are to be doing. That's our job from God. I find it easy to forget just what sin has done to all of mankind. In grading writing for the broadcast today, I reread Romans chapter 5, and it kind of squared my thinking again on this issue, because in verse 12, I read these words, sin entered the world. We are told that when it entered into the world, the verse goes on to say, death passed upon all men. Sin has permeated every inch of every person who has ever lived. That's why the virgin birth had to happen, so that Jesus could be born without sin. Now, the history of sin begins back in Genesis 3. Let me give you a couple of words beginning with the letter D. Here's the first one. It's the word deliberateness. Deliberateness. There is a deliberateness of sin that opens the whole story of sin. Sometime go over to 1 Timothy chapter 2, where we're told this about Adam, what, what was happening there in the Garden of Eden that's told in Genesis 3. In the book of 1 Timothy 2, we're told this, I'm quoting now, Adam was not, listen to me, was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Now, friend, listen, Adam, the head of the human race, openly, knowingly, deliberately sinned. And you and I, of course, sinned in Adam. That's what Romans 5, 12 says. We sinned in Adam. But what sin brought to us is certainly anything but a pretty picture. In a nutshell, it brought, here's my other D word for today, it brought death. When the verse in Romans 5 says that death passed upon all men, it means that sin went through all men. It permeated the entire human race. This sin permeation was a far worse horror story than anything that could ever be invented by a Hollywood writer. It corrupted us, according to Isaiah 64, 6. That's why we are all an unclean thing. That's why we are all filthy rags, morally, uh, and in the issue of righteousness. But it, not only that, sin made us stubborn people, Jeremiah 6, 16 says. 
Sin created stubbornness in us that we don't even want to obey God. We love our sin. We love spiritual darkness, John 3 says. We'd rather be in darkness because our deeds are evil. Well, spiritual death, which resulted from sin, makes people blind to spiritual truth, Ephesians 4.18 says. And this blindness is helped along and promoted by Satan himself, according to 2 Corinthians 4.4. Sin, to make things worse, so impacted us, so affected us, that now we are helpless to do anything for ourselves to fix our condition. That's what we're told here in Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. That is why it's so hard to get people saved. Our evangelistic efforts are dependent on the powerful work of God the Holy Spirit. You and I are called to plant the gospel seed and then, well, pray like crazy. Yet the work of getting people saved is God's work. You and I need a supernatural evangelism. We need to be gospel witnesses who grasp that the only supernatural stirring that can happen in the soul, happen in a soul that's corrupt, stubborn, blind, and helpless, that's the only stirring that can happen there is by God Almighty himself. The good news is that's exactly the work in which our God specializes. Why is it so hard to get people to receive Christ? The answer, we can't, only God can. I mentioned here a, an illustration. I have before me here a picture. In 1994, Kevin Carter won the Pulitzer Prize for a featured photo, and his photo just really caught everybody's attention, but a photo ended up moving him to commit suicide when he was just 33 years of age. You see, his photograph was of a very small, starving child in Sudan. The child was walking, trying to get to a food station, but the photo clearly showed that the child was already in grave danger of dying. But the power behind the picture came by what was behind the child. There, stalking this, this horribly emaciated child was a vulture. This bird who lives off the remains of dead things. The bird knew that a meal was soon to be had. Well, the published photograph brought a flurry of responses. People wanted to help this child. And everybody who knew the photographer asked the same questions. Questions like, well, whatever happened to the child? Does the child ever make it to the food center? Is the child still alive? And the question that really haunted Kevin, the photographer, was this. What did you do about the child? Well, by his own statement, Kevin did chase the vulture away after taking the picture, but that's all he did. He had no answer to all the questions. The fact that he did nothing for the child's real need nagged at his soul until finally it led him to just take his own life. This unsaved man was haunted by the fact that the real story was the dying of the child, not his camera skills. Believers are called to see the lost and their real need. We must fight to chase away the cultural vultures. We can do that all we want. Things like injustice, poverty, family values, that may make the world better, but if unsaved the photographers can be haunted to the point of utter despair, then surely believers need to be moved to feed the soul-starving people, sinners around us, with the real bread of life. Their answer, their real need, is the gospel, the bread of life, Jesus Christ, not for us to make their moral setting better. Oh, let's pray for our country but let's be telling the gospel of Jesus Christ. Only that can save the life of starving sinners. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.